Good morning, guys. So, today we will start for the very last part um, for the semester materials. Before we get started, let's we'll just see where we are, where we are right now at our schedule. So we are at the 13th week. Next week is the Thanksgiving break, so no class. Um, so this week would basically um, mo mostly focus on chapter eight, which is the storage and index, which I'll talk about later. And here I say we will have a poem about you, but I can't sign it yet. So it will be moved to the Wednesday after the break. Okay, so that's in December 1st. <coughs> December 1st, yeah. Okay. Um, so that one will be on chapter eight. Okay, I, I initially wanted to put it on uh, the Monday after the break, but I think that will be too cruel. <laughs> put it on the Wednesday after the break. Okay, uh, and I'll make sure I post it today so you have enough time to work on it. Okay, like during this week, so maybe you don't have to work on it um, during the break. And don't forget, after you come back from the break, you'll be doing your project demo too. Okay, which was expecting. Um, and for this one, it will be close to the final part for your project. Okay, so the TA will check on um, all, of our, all of your progresses, and it should be really similar to what you already want to demonstrate to the whole class in our presentation. Okay, so yeah, we only have these few weeks left. So as you can expect, uh, initially, in the beginning of the semester, I said we will have 10 quizzes, um, but we already have, we only had six until now, so four left. That's what you can expect, okay? Four left. Um, and two, two homework, which will both be, I would make sure they will be way more lightweight than the one you had in the past four, because it's near the end of the semester and I want you to put more time um, on your project, okay? So for the final, um, just make sure when we work through chapter 8, chapter 12, and chapter 16, all the way to the final, for the final is accumulative. So for that, um, you want to make sure you maybe keep your cheat sheet from midterm 1 and 2. Don't want you to go home and say it's done and then tear it in a thousand pieces and <laughs> throw it away. Yeah, you can keep it for your final, okay? For the midterm 1 and midterm 2 cheat sheet, and then plus the third sheet all together for your final. So before we get started, I just want to quickly ask you guys how the midterm was. What do you think? Part two was good? Way better than part one? <laughs> yeah, so sorry. I'm really sorry for part one. And we are grading on it now. Actually, everyone performs pretty well, I think, on their average. Uh, because the way we're looking at right now is just whether you get the query right. And because of the mistake, so the result doesn't matter. Okay? And thanks again for uh, Wintel, who actually picked it, it, the error from the script. So then, yeah, that was awesome. Right, but um, yeah, a lot of people suffer from my mistakes, so I'm really sorry for that. Um, but I guess from midterm to part two should be fine. Yeah, try to make it not too hard. And I thought a lot of people finished quite early as well. All right, so before we get into um, the lecture for today, I just want to quickly show you conceptually where we're at instead of just on the schedule. So let's go back all the way to lecture one. If you remember what we were talking about back then. Okay. So in August, when we first had the lecture, we were talking about what will be introduced in this lecture. Okay. So I gave you this big outline. So right now you can see we have cover all of the foundations part so far, okay? and we have covered the applications part. So what's left will be these three. Okay, so all of the things on the right hand side are actually um, covered up that we are not going to teach because those will be the grad student level um, material. Okay, if you are interested, you can look into those. But for these three aspects, um, all on the system side. We will just teach chapter 8, chapter 12, and chapter 16. Okay, so so far, um, if you recall from the very beginning, we were just talking about the ER model and everything. I, I remember I got a tiny complaint saying 
Everything was so concept conceptual, so theoretical, I don't see how we're going to use it. And then in the second part of the whole lecture, everything suddenly becomes too hands-on. Now you have to do the sequel, you have to learn a lot of programming. Okay? And now we kind of sit back again. For the very third part of the lecture, again we go back to more theoretical stuff. Okay? So what we will focus on today, we'll focus this week, I'll uh, we will focus on storage and indexing. So, so far we have only talked about how we are going to design the database, how we are going to um, query information from the database, but we haven't actually really touched on the topic of how the data is actually being stored, okay? And how they're actually, um, in regards to how they are stored, how they're actually uh, queried or are accessed in some sense. You have the query, but how things are actually accessed. So that's what we will talk about for chapter 8. And we will also talk about for different kinds of designs of the database when they are storing the files, uh, how we can assess the performance of different designs of database. So we will teach you how to do um, cost evaluation, to compute the cost of it. And then the last two parts, we will have query evaluation. If you recall when we were learning relational algebra, we say for the same query, we can actually write them in different kinds of relational algebra. And at the time, we were just briefly discussing, okay, if we do this in the middle of it, not to wait to the very last part of the relational algebra to do it, we can think of it as being more efficient, but we just say, let's think about it that way at the time. And this part will actually really show you how things are being more efficient in the way that we actually evaluate the queries that we learn in relation to algebra. Okay? And then finally, we will touch on transaction management at the very end of the semester. Okay? And this part we already covered in the gentleman. All right? So let's see what we will talk about today. Right. So 30 lectures later, now we're going to talk about the system part. All right. So chapter 8 is called Storage and Indexing. So the topics that will be covered in this chapter, the first thing is the overview of the storage engine. So basically it's saying how the things are being stored. We have different kinds of mechanisms, which we'll talk about soon. And we will talk about how does the database management system store and access the system data. We will then go on to talk about file organizations and access methods. As you can see, same, uh, just self-explanatory from the name. Self-organization is just telling you how the files are being stored. And access methods are saying how the files can be accessed. It's different methods that we can do. And the fourth one is indexing, actually. Um, Indexing to saying we have a bunch of files, and in order to, to store them, we have to find out the way of how we can assign them on the disk space. Okay, so that's for indexing. And then a really, really important part in this chapter will be quantitative analysis, which is the IO cost, which is the one we talk about, okay, for the cost of accessing um, the data. And then eventually we'll talk about choice of indexes and performance. We will introduce a couple of different kinds of indexing and we'll show you what's the comparison between them. Okay? So let's start with the basic abstraction of data. So data in a database management system is a collection of records. Okay, so you can think of the records as the tuples that we learn in the data, uh, relational database model. So, it's a collection of records in the files. Okay. We'll talk about what these, these units actually mean later. So here is an important thing. i um, not sure how many of you have taken computer architecture. Some of you? Right. So maybe you have learned about this unit. So each file actually consists of one or many pages. Anyone have heard of the pages? The unit pages, okay, good. So if you don't know the pages, you can think of it as like the minimum unit, um, the smallest unit that the read write will have, okay? So, here we have two main concepts that will help us to organize data to support fast access of records which are the file organizations 
in access methods. Okay. These two will be uh, discussed separately in the rest of the chapter. Okay. So basically we can just um, put this chapter into one part for file organizations and one part for access methods. Today we'll focus on the first. Okay. So each file organization usually makes certain operations efficient, but other operations expensive. So later on when you learn different kind of file organization system, you can think of them as having trade-offs. So this um, design will have a better uh, advantages because of this, but maybe in other scenarios it will perform worse. So to think about this basic abstraction of data in a more pictorial way, we have this graph right here. So here you can think of it as this way. Here we have the database, okay? We always use this to represent the database. And inside we have multiple files, okay? So for these purple little blocks, they are the records, okay? So for the left-hand side, you can think of them as the logical unit of data, okay? So here it is really similar to what we can think about mapping into the relational data model. Right. Earlier I say we have a database and we have files and records. Records we think of in those tuple. So for files, maybe you can think of them as relations or a table. Okay. So to map them to how they are actually stored is right here. Okay. We have multiple pages. And the things actually scatter around in this, in this space. So how they are actually assigned in the addresses might not completely map to what you think of them logically. So on the right hand side, we say for this kind of pictorial representation, it's the physical unit of the data. Okay. So logically you think things are organized in the way that you think it is. So that's for the logical unit. Okay, but physically it might not be that way. So what bridges them together will be the file organization. Okay. So it gives you the abstraction so you actually don't have to think about how they are actually stored in the physical. So think of it this way, when we learn about relational data model, we have the keys. And sometimes we say maybe, but we only talk about maybe back then. We say maybe when they're actually stored in the, on the disk, they are stored by, um, maybe by, the key, by sorting the key, okay, in the order of the key. Okay, so maybe that's just one way. Or let's say there, here's an example. We say a file of employee records is sorted by the salary of the employee. Okay, you don't really have to write much, I just have a lot of space here. But, um, so think about these two queries. When you already have files sorted by salary, then for the first query, when we want to find employees who make 90K to 100K a year, that should be simple because the data is already sorted by the salary. So you have a range of things you want. So because the file, maybe we have the employees sorted in the increasing order based on the salary, then fetching the information per one should be easy. Right? Just get them from 90 to 100K. However, because it's sorted by salary, so there is no guarantee that we will have any clue of how the age is being sorted. So for query two, then this will be potentially costly. Okay? Because for query one, we just, we only think of, in this way you can think of, we only think of query one so um, the design is easy for fetching based on the salary. It will be hard to fetch based on other attributes or other fields, you can say. But maybe in your design, um, the salary is more important, then you can design it this way. Okay, just a really simple toy example. All right. So as you can imagine, in the whole database management system, when we store the data, uh, because we have to sort mass, massive, uh, massive amount of data. So the data actually has to persist across program execution. So we would need external storage to store the data, as you can imagine. So the data in database management system is stored on external storage devices and fetched into main memory for processing. This is easy, right? You have somewhere else to store the real data, and every time you need it, pull it into the main memory. So there are two types that we will often use, and they have their pros and cons. The first one is the disks. So the disks can um, 
but it's a really random page at a fixed cost. So the, that's the design for it. Okay, you don't have to go through all of the data for it. If you want something, you can access it just based on maybe a key or whatever value it is. So you can retrieve random page at a fixed cost. So um, accessing different pages is the same. Okay. So some properties for this is that reading several consecutive pages is much cheaper than reading them in a random order. So by this we're saying you have to think of um, even though we say whenever we access, it doesn't matter which of our page, it would be the same cost. But if the pages are being consecutive, actually you still have to think of the intermediate cost when it's moving, right? moving to the next one. So if it's consecutive, it's still cheaper. But a lot of time we just consider the fact that you can access random uh, pages without too much overhead. Okay? So this is the most important external storage device or mostly used. Okay? So the unit of a record, uh, or unit of a read or write, is what, as we said earlier, the page. Okay. So earlier we said page would be the minimum unit for read and write. Okay. Typically, it will be from 4KB to 8KB. Um, you can think of it as um, the parameter for the database. So they can tune it based on what they want, so they can set it to 4 or set it to 8. And another device that is often used would be the tapes. Okay? tapes. So we won't get into how actually they're designed very differently because that's, for, that's left for computer architecture, of course. But you, can, uh, just, you just need to know the brief difference between them. So we said for disks, accessing different pages um, require the same fixed amount of cost. But for tapes, um, you have to actually read the pages in sequence. So say you want to find um, a page in the middle of it, you actually have to go through all the previous ones. So that's costly. But um, the material itself um, is cheaper than disk. So sometimes, uh, a lot of times, it's still being used. And the main use of it will be for archival storage. So here is just a brief um, hierarchy for different kinds of devices that can help us to store the data. Starting from the very top is the cache. Okay, so we have it the smallest. And then we have main memory. And then we have flash memory, and then we have magnetic disk, and we have optical disk, and then magnetic tapes. Okay. I won't test you on this, but these are um, what the computer architecture course will tell you about. Okay, so at the beginning of today's lecture, we said we will start from talk about storage engine, okay, which we'll be covered right here. So what exactly is a storage engine? You can think of the storage engine as a whole framework, okay, for helping you for doing the file organization. Okay, so that's the storage part, not the access method. So storage engine, you can think of it in the three separate parts, which we call the different kind of managers. We have file manager, we have buffer manager, and we have disk space manager. Okay. So for the first one, file manager, the, uh, it takes care of the file and access methods layer, and it makes calls to the buffer manager also, it provides the notion of records to the query. Okay, so you can think of here as the one helping you to connect to the query. So when you make a query from SQL, this is the part, like this, the front end that will help you to take care of it. So that's why we have the records, and okay, the notion of records. Then we have buffer manager. So what buffer manager is actually doing is just to stage its pages from external storage to main memory buffer pool. So as we talked about earlier, we have external storage saving the data, and we need someone to actually pull it out, to put it to the main memory so the query can <coughs> retrieve it. So that's what the buffer manager is helping you to do. Okay, we just have a buffer between the file manager and disk space manager. So in terms of the disk, disk um, space manager, it manages space, okay? Again, what do you think in, it will be in terms of? The unit I just keep using today. Pages. Yeah, in terms of pages, okay? So in terms of pages on disk. So just keep thinking of these concepts in terms of pages.
So again, file manager is the part of the taking care of the file and access method. So this will be the, um, the manager that we focus in the rest of today's lecture. Okay. All right. So we talked about there's file organizations in access methods. So let's start from file organization. I think that's, yeah, we won't get into access methods today. Let's start from, from um, file organizations. So file organizations, it has the methods of arranging a file of records on external storage. So the thing that's being used to physically locate the record, I think you have learned, maybe you have learned the concept of addresses on the disk. Um, you can think of them as the record ID, okay, which we will use. This is the term we will use in the rest of the lecture. So just think of arranging a file what will we base on? We will base on the record ID, which in short, we'll just talk about it as our ID later on. Okay. So a storage engine may support a number of alternative file organizations. You can, you can imagine that like we need to organize files, but there should not be just one certain way. So we, we will talk about different kinds of file organizations, and there will be pros and cons. So in addition to file organization, auxiliary data structures, such as indexes, allow us to find the um, RIDs of records with given values in index search key fields. So a way to put it will be RID is how things are actually stored. Okay? And indexing is a mechanism to help you to locate the RID. So that's sitting between the logic and how it's actually being stored. So for a file manager, earlier we talked about file manager, you will need to take care of a couple of operations. Okay. So let's see what the file manager should do. So the file manager stores the records in the file, which may be in alternative organizations. So later we'll talk about three, okay, over the collection of disk pages. So here are the basic operations that a file manager should be able to do. The first one, which we say it will be able to step through all the records in the file. So a lot of times we just call this scanning. Okay? If we say it's scanning, then it's stepping through all of the records in the file. So here we also have the ability to retrieve particular record based on its what? What do you think? Or ID, yeah. Okay, so the file manager also should be able to retrieve particular record based on its RID. Okay, as you remember, earlier we say RID is the one actually saying where it's physically stored. Okay, so every time when it's retrieved, it takes one eye out. Also, the file manager should be able to retrieve a set of records based on a search condition. So, a lot of times we don't know what the RID is, but we know what are the conditions we want. Like earlier we said we want um, the employees between this range of the salary. Okay? So that would be a search condition. So for search condition, we can do equ um, equity search which is just doing, we only want the exact same equal values, or we can do a range search, just like the earlier ones, 90K to 100K salary employees, that's all we want. Okay, finally, the file manager should be able to do updates. Okay, so updates will be for insertion and deletion. So here will be for the file manager. And earlier we talked about we have different kind of alternatives for file organizations, right? So here are the three. The first one, uh, who has, I think I've asked before, but who has taken algorithm course? Okay, some of you. So you have learned about data structures as well. Okay, so here, the first one is using heap files, okay? 
But the funny thing is, like, whenever we look at heat, you will think of the heat we learn in algorithm. But actually, here it doesn't really make any connection between the heat we learn and the heat here it is UV. So I just want to make sure you don't get confused between the terms. Okay. So here, the first one is the heat files. So you can see in the parentheses we say random order. So you can, you can imagine the files actually won't be ordered. You just put it in whatever, uh, however you want. So here I have a typo. I say suitable when typical access if a file. So each answer actually is a file. So if you read through it, it doesn't make sense. So it should be is. So the heat files, it is suitable when typic, uh, typical access is a file scan retrieving all records. What do we mean by that? So a heap file actually doesn't care about how you actually store the data. So you would think, then when is it going to be useful at all? So it will be useful when you also don't care about the order of the data. So the, the mechanism itself is so simple that it just takes care of storing the data, storing the data, storing the data, and every time when you want it, just say, give it me all of the data. Okay, so the design itself is so lightweight, there's no complicated mechanism behind it, and you don't require it. So that's when you might want to use heat files, which sounds not so realistic at all, because normally when we want files, we will have conditions that we want. So a bit more sophisticated than this is the second one, sorted files. So sorted files, just as the name suggests, you will be sorting the files based on whatever key you want, or whatever action you want. Okay. So it's best if records must be retrieved in some order, or only a range of orders is needed. So like the one we saw earlier, right? The employee uh, being sorted based on the salary, and when we do the query that we want the range of, um, that we want the employees in the range of salaries, then the sorting file will be a good choice. Okay. Now, even more sophisticated than sort files is the one we just call indexes. So for indexes, I only say um, data structures to organize records. So in another way, you can think of it as actually um, indexes take care of uh, the indexes are assigned based on what data structure. So here is the flexible part. You can use different kind of data structures in this design, and your indexes will be based on that. If you have taken an algorithm course before, we have different kind of trees, right? And maybe you would say the tree, how should we do the order for the tree? Maybe the root is number one, and then always child is two, three, four, uh, two, three, four, five, okay? So it doesn't matter, but for the indexes, it's indexed based on the data structure that we would use. Not just tree, maybe other kind of data structure. Okay, a bit more on indexes, actually. So it can be combined with files to create index files. So for the other two uh, file organizations, the alternatives, they actually don't have the index files because, as you can see earlier, for heat and sorted files, they don't introduce the concept of index. So there's no extra stuff to combine with files. We only say, okay, just put it in random order, or just sort it based on a certain attribute. So we don't have the additional thing that we should combine with the files. But for indexes, when we can actually combine the index, we create for it, and then with the files, then we have index files. So just like sorted files, um, indexes can speed up the searches, okay? as you can imagine, way better than heat. Because what happens when you want to search for things in heat? Because there's no order and there's no indexes, so when you want to search for things, you can you actually have to go through every single thing. That's for scanning, right? Scan through all of the um, all of the files, all of the records to find the ones you want. But for indexes, just like the sort of files, they speed up searches because they have something to base on, to search for, okay? Also, updates are much faster than in sort of files. And you, we will see why later. However, this is the only disadvantage we will talk about. 
you can imagine we have introduced the concept of index. So whenever we add something extra, if you have poor design, you will have actually have large um, amount of files dedicated to the fact of storing indexes. So there might potentially be a storage overhead. If your design is so bad that you need such a big file to store the indexes you created, then that will cause overhead. Yeah. Is this heat different from the heat that previously Yeah, it's different. It's in the area yeah, so it's not that complicated. So here, um, they are, even though they use heat, the only idea they want to come is just render order. Okay. So it's not like the heat. Yeah, because I was wondering, it has the indexes. Arrays, normal oh. data structure, mm -hmm. it has the indexes. Yeah, in algorithm, order. heaps yeah. have indexes. But here, yeah, that's a good question. But here, the heaps does not have any okay. indexes. Okay. So here, the only thing that have the extra indexes is the third method. Okay. So yeah, just don't get confused between this heap and the heap you learned in algorithm. Right. Okay. So let's go through each organization one by one. The first one we talk about is heap file organization. So we say it's a record that can be placed anywhere in a file where there is a space for the record. So whenever you want to add something, you don't even care where you're going to assign it. Just put it here, right? So there's no concept of indexes or, or anything else. And there is no ordering of the record. Okay? And typically a single file for each relation, for each table. So here you can think of it as a file, and then that will be for pages. Okay, pages might not be just that two tuples. Okay, might be more. But here I just want to show you how it's like. In the blue part, it's saying that's a one file. The okay. green is the tuples inside. So again, you might be thinking, what's so good about this if it's being randomly put? So the good thing is that it's so lightweight. There's no design behind it. Right? So if your application at the same time does not care about any ordering, any retrieving based on condition, this will, will actually be good. Right? You just display whatever you want on your front end. Lightweight design. But not so realistic, so not really being used in practice. So the second uh, organization that we want to talk about is the source of file organization. So you can see for this one, um, we sort it based on, maybe this is the ID per person. Okay. So records are stored sequentially in a sort of order based on the values of a search key. So you can define what search key you want to use okay, to sort the, uh, the files. It does not have to necessarily be um, the primary key we learned in relation to data model. Okay, you, can, you can pick whichever you want to use to sort it. However, it is actually very expensive to do updates. Okay. Here you can see, um, let's say today we want to update, we want to do an insertion of a person with ID 122, but we don't have any index. So the way we, we can put it is actually we have to go through and find the position first, and we put in, and then move them both down, right? Because everything has to be in sorted order. So that's why it's expensive for updating. And also same for deletion. Once you delete, then you have to put it all back again. <coughs> so one way that can make it not so bad is to use the idea of a pointer chain. So I think most of you who are here have taken 122, like a long time ago. Okay. No? 122, like the, um, I think, C++ for data structure. And I guess that's the first time that you guys learn about pointers in the lab. Um, so you can think of it as that thing. So instead of, so here, even though it's put in this way, okay, so we use um, the pointer chain. So here, again, if we want to insert 122, you can actually just break the chain here. And then you add it right here, the 122. And this one, instead of pointing down next to the, the bottom one, or the one next to it, you just point it downwards. Right? That's an easier way. 
but then pictorially it won't look like it's sorted anymore. But following the chain, it's still sorted. Okay. So that's the second method, still intuitive. And the third one is the indexes. So the indexes, we can think of it this way. An index of the file speeds up selection on the search key fields for the index. So um, you can design a mechanism for indexing, a pendant on your files. Okay? And then it will uh, speed up the selection. So any subset of the fields or attributes of a relation can be the search key for an index on the relation. So as I said before, it does not necessarily have to be um, the primary key. Okay, you can choose different kinds of keys, different kinds of attributes to be the search key. So here, search key is not the same. As key. Okay. Um, all right, and a bit more on indexes. I'm not sure whether it's going to be. Oh, okay, it's fine. Okay, a bit more on indexes. So index contains a collection of data entries. So what exactly is data entry? Here we just basically denote it as k star. So you can think of data entry as um, it's something combining of search key and it has enough information to locate data records with search key value k. I'll show you different kinds of uh, data entry later. We have three different alternatives and they have pros and cons. So the indexes is support efficient retrieval of all data entries with a given key value k and then use them to obtain data record. Okay, so far it's still confusing. But based on the above definition, do you think we can use sorted files as an index? Actually, why not? If it's been sorted, maybe you can just directly take the attributes and be in the index, but it's not necessary at all. What do you think? The search key can maybe mm -hmm. the sorted thing. Mm -hmm. If you're sorting it according to certain, so that will be the search key before the indexes. Mm -hmm. It can be stored. It can be, yeah. So it also can be necessary, even though you can think, oh, earlier we only taken care, we already took care of it, it's sorted. But um, it will be useful, for example, today um, you not only want to do update because earlier we have the chain already, right? We can use the pointer chain. But for searching, if you only do sorted, you still have to go through it. So today, if we have indexes and plus some mechanism of searching for it, then index can be useful. Okay. But if we plus the index and that's not just sorted anymore, then it becomes the indexes, organizations. Okay. So what exactly is data entry? So here we have different alternatives for it. Three alternatives. Let's see what they are. Okay. So the first alter uh, alternative is just an actual data record with key value K. And the second one is we use the K and the RID. Okay, the RID of data record data record with search key. And the third one, instead of directly using the RID, we use K along with list of RIDs of data records for search key. Okay? So instead of just having like one value, one value, here we can have one value, list of values. Okay? I'll show you how it looks like pictorial. So a bit more on these. So um, the choice of alternatives for data entry is actually related to the indexing technique okay, used to locate the data entries with a given key value k. So for indexing technique, you can think of different kind of data structures that we use okay, for doing indexing. So how the data entries will be actually will be related to what data structures you use. So a couple of indexing techniques that you might have heard of, one is B plus tree, and I think another one way more uh, commonly heard is 
hash hashing. Yeah, you guys have heard of the ha uh, hashing. So the hash based structures. A typically index contains auxiliary information that directs searches to the desired data features. So let's take a look at what are the alternatives. Okay, so we just briefly went through three, right? The first one is an actual data record with key value K. And the second one is pair of K along with the RID. And the third one is K along with list of RID. So the second one and third one is actually really simple. Okay, start from the alternative one. So for alternative one, the index structure is actually a file organization for data records instead of a heap file or sorted file. Okay. So typically, only at most one index on a given collection of data records uses alternative one. Otherwise, data records are duplicated, leading to redundant storage and potential inconsistency. So if data records are very large, then very, intuitive, uh, very intuitively actually, the number of page, pages containing data entry is high. Okay. So it's implying the index size is also large. Let's take a look at how alternative one will look like. I'm not sure whether when printed out it's clear though. I'm afraid it might make the background a bit different from the dots. It's not too smudged together. Okay. All right, so this is for alternative one. You can see here for the blue one, we just say it's the data entry, okay, or we say data record. And here is the internal indexing node. Okay, it's so helping you to traverse to the data you want. Okay, really simple, that's all for alternative one. Here's the data entry, and then we use different kind of index, and then the point to different data entry. Okay, so here it just in abstract, okay, you don't know actually what data structure it is. So based on different data structure, you will have different way of pointing to the data um, entry. So for alternative two and three, it will be based on this super simple alternative one. So for alternative two and three, the data entries typically um, are much smaller than data records. Oh yeah. So here, for alternative one, the data entry is equal to the data record. Or for alternative two and three, they are different. However, on the slides, I make them the same to so make sure you cross them out later. I'll show, I'll show you a way to cross it out. Okay. So for alternative two and three, it's better than alternative one with large data records, especially if search keys are small. Also, portion of index structure used to direct search, which depends on size of data entries. Um, is much smaller than with alternative one. Let's start with alternative two. And you can see here I also put it's equal to data record. Let's cross it out. Okay, direct copying too fast. So let's cross it out. And here, data record is actually different. Okay, so what's so different about uh, alternative one and two is that for um, two, alternative two, we move the data record. So now it's separate from data entry. And not only we use the index to traverse to the data entry now, we use the data entry to go to the data record itself. So data entry, this is the K, K star, okay? And then here is the actual record that we want. And also another tiny mistake that I had, I just spotted this morning on your slides, I think there is one data entry pointing to two data records around here, right? Like, like remove that. <laughs> so that should be like for alternative three. Yeah, sorry about that. I put, I think it's this block point, or this block, it points to two. Okay. So why should we remove that? Because that should be for alternative three. So the only difference between alternative two and three is that, okay, here again, no data record, okay? Data record is right here. So, same as alternative two, that we use the data entry to point to the data record, but instead of saying one data entry can only point to one data record, now alternative three has the ability of having one single data entry pointing to multiple data records. So this maps to the definition of it, right? A list of RIDs instead of just one RID. So refresh again for alternative two, we say 
the way we design, we design it is the pair of K with RIDs, K, RID, K, RID. But for alternative three, we do K, list of RIDs. Okay. So, so far, it's, so, it's still really concept. You don't know why we are designing it this way, but we'll get in a little bit further. Okay. So, for alternative two and three, we say actually alternative three is more compact than alternative two, but leads to variable size data entries, even if search keys are a fixed length. So you can imagine earlier um, in alternative three, if uh, for different kind of data records, they can already be pointed by the same data entry, then there's no point of giving them multiple entries, right? We don't have the design. Okay, so on your slides, we actually still have um, index classification, but I won't talk about it today. I want to leave them for next time. So it's um, the whole thing is more uh, connecting together. Before we finish, just want to quickly show you. So here, even though I say for homework five, um, it will be due on the 30th, but I move it. I move it to the second. So, uh, I will post it today. So, oh, I didn't show you. Okay. So, um, yeah, today is the 16th, and I'll post homework five today. And it will be due uh, the Wednesday after the break. So after you come back the Wednesday. It's not Monday. I think that's too much. Uh, but turn it in uh, on Wednesday. And also, don't, re don't forget, um, the week after the break is the week you have to do the demonstration. Okay, the second demonstration for your project. All right, so again, I'll do it. Oh, you mean the demonstration? Yeah. I don't think it will be on Monday. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so again, it will be based on the TA, but I'll make sure she makes it like later than no, no earlier than Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. So you still have some buffer. Okay, that's all. And I'll return the midterm on Friday.